the slit lamp exam. Now this is one of the places that you're probably going to have the hardest time uh, the first time you rotate through an ophthalmology clinic because this is entirely uh, new to you and it takes quite a bit of time to become proficient with a slit lamp. Uh, one of the problems you'll, you'll run into is how do you describe your findings and in ophthalmology we describe these things in the same order and this is just a way to organize our exam uh, so that other people can understand it and to make sure we don't miss anything. So I'm going to go through this with you. SLE just means slit lamp exam. EXT means external. Here I'm writing within normal limits. Uh, OU just means both eyes. If someone had, uh, say, a viral conjunctivitis, they might have swollen glands, so I might say they have plus lymphadenopathy. Uh, L and L just means lids and lacrimation. Uh, this patient has mild uh, myobomanitis or blepharitis, OU. I'll go into that in a, another video. Uh, C and S just means conjunctiva and sclera. That's the white part of the eye. Uh, you can have uh, injection. You can have subconj blood. Uh, or it can be white and quiet. And so this patient has one plus injection in the right eye and normal in the left eye. K is K for cornea and here we usually just say it's clear or if it's not we write that as well. AC means the anterior chamber. This is the uh, potential space between the cornea and the iris underneath and that's, flu that's filled with uh, aqueous fluids. Normally it's crystal clear and so we write deep and quiet. If someone has an acute glaucoma it might be shallow or if they've got an infection in the eye it might uh, have some cell and flare which I'm going to show you in a future video. Uh, iris, you say it's flat and round with no neovascularization uh, of the iris in both eyes. The lens, if it's clear, just write clear in both eyes. However, if they have, say, a 2 plus nuclear sclerotic cataract in one eye or a PCIOL, which is just posterior chamber intraocular lens, you would write that here. And vit is uh, short for vitreous, and that's just behind the lens. Um, and here I'm just saying no cells and a, uh, some other stuff. But Let's not worry about that too much now, but let's go over a sample exam just to show you. Here's a little cheat sheet. We'll go down the list. Externals uh, within normal limits in this patient. Looking at the lids and lacrimation, they look pretty good. I don't see any problems there. C and S, conj and sclera. Well, you can see the conj vessels, but they don't look dilated, and the sclera underneath looks uh, white and completely normal. K is for cornea. It looks clear, but really to get the best view of a cornea, you have to turn your slit beam on, and that's what this little slit of light here is, and you just basically sweep this thing across the cornea and make sure you don't see any funny opacities. It's a little out of focus but uh, everything looks fine there. Anterior chamber, which is the space between the cornea and the iris and uh, I usually make a short fat beam of light and shoot it here and it looks pretty clear. Uh, iris is flat, here it's blue, looks normal. Uh, L is for lens and it looks clear. Now this little light beam here is the, uh, the front of the lens and this is the back of the lens. I'm shooting a, a beam of light through this, but it's like a slice. And right here in the middle is a little is a, uh, a lens suture, which is uh, um, part of the development of the lens. But this lens is clear. So let's uh, see a patient who's not normal. Uh, EXT uh, is within normal limits. Lids and lacrimation. He's got some chemosis. This patient fell and landed on his eye. Uh, it's chemosis, but otherwise normal lids. Conj and sclera. You can see a uh, some red here, that's blood underneath the skin of the eye, under the conjunctiva, so he has some subconj heme. And the cornea looks clear as I sweep my beam across. Um, that looks just fine. AC is for anterior chamber, that's the space, that, this fluid filled space in between the cornea and the iris. If we turn our beam down and turn the lights off, there's actually some individual cells floating in here. Those are just uh, some PMNs from inflammation. You probably can't see it well in this video though. Uh, I is for iris. It looks nice and flat. There's a little hole in the iris up here which is a surgical thing that we did. And then finally L is for lens and this patient actually doesn't have a lens. He has an implant. There's a clear lens there. You can't really see it but you can see some fibrotic junk on the back surface of that implant and that's what that is. Let's do one more patient like this. This is a useful exercise. Um, here are the uh, lids look normal. The conj and sclera looks uh, chemotic. It's actually kind of swollen here. And you can tell that because of the way the light beam uh, reflects off this thing. It actually comes out at you. Cornea is somewhat hazy. The anterior chamber is actually has some pus inside of it that's settled to the bottom. And there's a tube up here. That's a tube shot from a glaucoma procedure. The iris looks reasonably flat. Here I am trying to look at the uh, anterior chamber again. You can actually see individual cells floating here in the fluid. Um, there they are. 
and uh, let's continue. The dilated fundus exam. Now, to this point, you probably only use the direct ophthalmoscope. Actually, very difficult to use, especially in the, uh, in the undilated eye, but do your best. Basically, I set this thing at zero and uh, come in and find the red reflex and then work my way in following that re red reflex as I get closer to the patient. Now, the success for this thing is going to depend entirely upon how close you get to the patient. Now, here I'm not getting very close. You can see I'm about four, uh, four inches away. Uh, what I like to do actually is put my other hand on the patient's uh, eyebrow and then rest the uh, back surface of the direct scope onto the back of my finger here and you can get really close and not worry about accidentally running into the patient. The closer you get, the better view you're going to get. Now in, uh, in our world, we use the indirect ophthalmoscope, which gets you a, a much broader view, um, but you lose some magnification detail from it. Now when you're looking at the eye, you're looking at a couple of things. Uh, you're looking at the optic disc, where the vessels come out. You're looking at the fovea uh, and macula, which is just the central part of your vision. And you're also looking at the periphery uh, out to the sides. With a direct scope, you're going to have a hard time doing any of this. Basically, what I do is I find a blood vessel and then track that blood vessel back to the disc and make sure it looks healthy. And then I work my way over to the macula, if I can, and see how that looks. When we write our note for the retinal exam, we usually do four things. And the mnemonic I use is most valuable player, and then I add a D on the end. So M is for macula. That's the central part of your vision. If you see it's flat, has a good reflex. V is for vessels. So see if there's any arterial nicking from hypertension, any attenuation or neovascularization. P is for periphery, that's the peripheral exam. And D is for disc, and that's the optic nerve. Uh, see if it's pink, healthy, and comments on the cup to disc ratio, which is important, especially with glaucoma. Finally, you write your assessment and plan. This is just like any other medical note. And that's it. So in summary, uh, a couple of key points I want to go over again. Flashes and floaters, these are signs of a retinal detachment or other problem. You've got to rule that out. Uh, the vital signs of ophthalmology are the vision, pupils, and pressure. You've got to check these things before you dilate a patient. Pinholing a patient will actually correct some of their uh, prescription error and help with media opacity. So if you get a lot better improvement with pinholing, you might want to recheck their glasses. The swinging light test, very important for picking up an APD or afferent pupillary defect, uh, also called a Marcus Gunn pupil. And the slit lamp exam and dilated fundus exam uh, are performed in a systematic approach, uh, which may look intimidating at first, but everything gets easy with practice. Now you can find uh, more videos and the uh, PDF files of uh, the chapters from optobook.com that correspond with each of these videos. So this was the history and physical uh, video. And if you want to read it, uh, by all means come by and, and download the thing. If you're going to read it, though, I recommend actually downloading the PDF file because the PDF is uh, formatted correctly, is most up to date. And if you're going to read a lot, it's usually easier to uh, print it out, print the PDF file out, and read it that way.